BBC Radio Nottingham. It's quarter past 11 now. Uh, as a parent, one of the proudest moments in your life, the day that your son or your daughter takes their first steps. Now, it's something that Kirsty and Michael Evans from Mansfield are actually still waiting for, because their son, Jake, was born prematurely, and it's affected his mobility. Jake's now four, but he can't stand or uh, walk unless he's actually helped. There is hope an operation could give Jake the power of unaided mobility. The thing is that this is going to cost something like £50,000 and uh, Kirsty and Michael are with me now. Hello. 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 Um, so let's just go back four plus years. Uh, he was born prematurely, as I say. How premature was he when he was, when he was born? He was uh, six weeks premature. Six weeks, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any clues that he was going to be born prematurely or was it just... Well, we... Um, Kirsty's waters broke at 29 yeah. weeks, was it? Yeah, it was 28 <coughs> weeks. We had quite a, a rocky road with, with pregnancy. We had bleeding and waters breaking early, but nothing to really suggest that there should be anything wrong. Right. Um, and it was still a bit of a shock when they decided to induce us early, so... And was there any indication at that time, w w was anyone talking to you about longer term no. problems no. well jake spent just under three weeks in the neonatal unit and when we left there we nobody mentioned any any concerns we went away thinking everything was fine now and um yeah so there was no warning signs there initially right and obviously it's one <coughs> step at a time it's one day at a time and you just want them to be able to come home with you and when, when was it obvious that there was a problem when it came to standing and walking well it was basically most children sit up around the six months time and by that time jay wasn't even beginning to show signs of it and was quite wobbly so we began to have our concerns but initially um doctors health visitors were initially saying it was premature he'll catch up and it wasn't until he was about 10 months old and he still wasn't even beginning to sit up that they started to actually take notice and began run running tests right okay so he's four years old now gives an idea of what it, what he can do and what he can't do yeah jake um crawls about um, on the floor, he like commando crawls and he also bunny hops but he doesn't actually crawl properly one leg at a time um, he can kneel up quite well and he uses that as a base to sit um, because he can't actually sit up so he'll kneel and he, that's his version of, of sitting up really Right. Um, he rolls over doesn't he he can get up on his bed, down on his bed the top half of his body is extremely strong um, it's just he can't stand independently, walk independently. Um, he walks with his little frame, his little K-walker. Um, but he's now starting to scissor in, so he's tripping himself up all the time. Hence the, the need for the operation now. Yeah. So in terms of day-to-day -day life for him and, and the rest of you as well, was he go to nursery? He's been to able school. to do that? Yeah. He's in reception class at the moment. Oh, right, so he's already at, at it's, reception. It's mainstream school, right. so obviously just needs to be wheelchair accessible mm -hmm. that's it really yeah and how is he does do you think he gets frustrated yeah extremely frustrated with things it must be because he must see all the rest of his friends and, and yeah. you as well he's a he's a very bright boy as well so he's been aware of his condition for quite some time um and it's obviously very frustrating for him when all the children can do all sorts of things and it's it's the same for us as well isn't it because um, Jake's not even aware of a lot of the things he can't do um, but for us there's just simple things like like around the house that, yeah. he can't, that he can't do and he's not aware that he can't do them it's, it's heartbreaking at times mm. but you have to try and get on with things and um, find a way around it don't yeah. you but he's, he's a happy boy and um, this operation's something that um, it's a chance to give him a a much better quality of life and enable him to do the things that the other children can do so yeah <clears throat> you've no doubt had a conversation or several with him about what the problem is and and what happens next what, what are you sort of telling him at the moment um well he started to ask questions when his younger sister started to walk obviously um and we've always told him that he has cerebral palsy and he probably has it because he was premature even though we don't know that that's the definite reason mm. um, but we've always told him that 
it's fixable. Um, and we've we've always referred time. to the operation as having magic put in his back. So that's he's known he's known that for probably two years now. Yeah, a long time. And now it's actually happening. He's getting quite excited. It's only weeks away now. So yeah, he's ready, isn't he? He's what uh, is it? Five weeks now? Six weeks? About five so weeks. About five weeks. He's going to see the magic doctor. That's going to put magic in his back. Right. <laughs> and then uh, he knows that it's going to be <clears throat> difficult afterwards. That he's going to have to put a lot of work in to get where he wants to be. Yeah. We've not made a secret of that. Hmm. Um, but we've always given him that hope that one day things will be normal for him. Because you you can't tell a child any different, really. No, that's right. Absolutely. And and the notion of it being something magic and the, the yeah. magic doctor, as you say, that that is the way to explain it. Yeah. Okay. Um. We'll uh, we'll play a, a tune now, Jamie Cullum, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how you managing to raise. Because uh, you need 50 grand for this as well. Yeah, it's you? a lot of money. It's yeah. a heck of a lot of money. Um, and we'll talk to someone who's helping you raise this amount of cash as well, who's literally getting on their bike. So we'll be back. And uh, more from Kirsty Michael and this um, mystery bike rider in just a moment. Now, you've been hearing from Kirsty and Michael Evans from Mansfield, uh, whose little boy is four years old. He's called Jake, and um, you've got a date for the operation, haven't you? The operation that will hopefully, fingers crossed, um, basically mean that he can walk and he can have more more mobility. Yeah. You've had this date for quite a while, have you? About two the, weeks. The, <laughs> the date itself we haven't had for long at all. Right. Um, it's we, We've known that we're having the operation in Bristol for several months yeah but they haven't given us a date until literally three weeks ago or something we knew like it that. was going to be this year yeah. we just didn't know when yeah so 15th of july mm -hmm. that's yeah. when he's uh he's penciled in i would imagine it you must have mixed emotions about that excitement because it could be the well you've been talking about magic but for mm. you as well as for jake mm. you know yeah. this could be the yeah. magic well cure couldn't yeah. it yeah well it's one of those things where we've had to fight to get where we are so we've been all up for it and excited but when it actually comes down to it it's going to be a major operation and obviously we're going to be very scared and uh, jake's going to be have to be such a brave brave little boy at the time yeah to get through but once the operation's over it's then just going to be hard work and uh, dedication to to getting him up on his feet and progressing We've been mentioning the amount of money that you need for an operation like this. Um, well, talk us through why, firstly, you can't just get this done on the NHS. Well, it, what it is at the moment is that it's a postcode lottery, um, whether you can get funding or not. And at the moment, Mansfield Primary Care Trust won't give out money for the SDR operation. Um, so it depends where you live, whether... Your primary care trust will support you and whether they think that you're going to get good results from the op um i know that jake's sort of condition has been said that this is too severe for sdr um but the people who made that decision have never met him it's, so, it's one of those things isn't it where there's children that's had the sdr a couple of years ago their N their local nhs trust made the decision that they weren't going to pay for it said that it wouldn't benefit that and those children now are running around jumping like the life's changed forever drastically and yet those people told them that they weren't even a suitable candidate yeah. for an operation that they knew nothing about and they basically make a decision um obviously they're sitting in an office looking at figures on a piece of paper aren't they and it's one of those things where um too many children would need the operation for them to want to pay for it mm. and that's all it comes down to really budget yeah so, well i was going to say and obviously you keep hearing about <coughs> times are tight and everything yeah. else and they yeah. have to make but, the, um, the, these calls i think um the people doing the sdr in bristol and now in leeds um, they're very passionate about it it's it's a, a positive thing life-changing for so many people and it's only going to be a matter of time before we're going to have it done in several hospitals up and down the country and the nhs will back it because at the end of the day the facts will start coming in soon they won't be able to deny people any longer and it's just an awareness thing really of yeah how on earth do you start trying to raise that amount of money especially when so much of your time is <clears throat> is tied up obviously looking after jake and everything yeah else. it's um, a very daunting prospect to have to raise that okay. kind of money and um it's only the fact that we saw so many other people had done it 
that we thought, yes, it, it can be done. But then when you begin it and um, you do a couple of little things, like I did a half marathon last year, but I only I only raised about £150 in sponsorship money from people I know sponsoring me a few quid here and there. So, and then you think, how, how can you possibly do it? But then these people come along like this Jason who's doing the bike ride and they're potentially raising several thousand for you and it's it's people like that that pop up out of nowhere and basically make the difference mm. plus we've got a really good set of parents of both of us both, yeah. both sides of the family we're just lucky to have a lot they? of family and friends um in mansour area that despite the recession and like the time that we're in people are still generous and can see a good cause yeah well you mentioned jason <coughs> and uh, he's on the line now morning jason morning how are you i'm all right yeah i mean how do you actually know kirsty and michael or do you do you actually know them through other people yeah it's um basically my daughter's nan goes to a dancing class and she met lynn which is um jake's nan and i'd mentioned that i was going to do the cycle ride i i there's something i've always wanted to do and I said I was, you know, going to do it. It's, um, and uh, uh, Isabel's nan said, mentioned Jake and asked if we would uh, do it in aid of Jake. And I couldn't think of a, a better thing to do it for. So that's how it's all kind of come about. Well, good for you. So you're riding from Land's End to John O'Groats? Oh, we're doing it the other way around because it's downhill. Oh. John O'Groats <laughs> to Land's End. It's all downhill <laughs> that way. Very good. You thought this through. Excellent. So when, when are you setting off? Uh, we start on the f July the 4th, and we finish hopefully on July the 12th, um, so it's in about nine days, I think it's about 110 miles a day, which we're all kind of now realising that's quite a long distance to cycle <laughs> every day. <laughs> it's often the way, isn't it? You, you sort of have this idea and you think, yeah, this will be a good challenge, it'll be a good fundraiser, and I suppose now you're getting close to it, the reality is now dawning on you. That's it, yeah. I was out on Sunday, did about 50 miles and came back with sunburnt knees, which I didn't didn't realise you could get on a bike. So <laughs> <that was> a <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if that's the only bit of pain you got so far, then you, you're doing something all right. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so how many of you are there doing the ride? Uh, there's four of us. Um, so uh, three people from AdTrack is a company that I work for who've been quite good and helped kind of pay for various things like the, the vehicle transport and we've gone to quite a lot of our clients and we've asked them to sponsor us so we're getting jerseys made with um just for jake.org.uk on them um and then yeah and then we've got uh, another friend of the business who's basically going to do a support vehicle so there'll be five of us in total um doing the whole event uh, we did chuck it out to everyone in the company, but there was only like three of us stupid enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> At least you were honest. How much do you think you've got so far? I think we're around about ten thousand. Um, That's good. So we've we like we, uh, if you go to the blog in the website, you can see the companies that have actually donated directly and sponsored the event. Um, and then hopefully things like this, we've done the sponsorship forms, and so we're just kind of trying to build up as much interest as possible. Because it's just a total privilege to do something for, for for just a little boy and hopefully change someone's life. Well, um, listen, uh, good good for you and the rest of the riders and the organisers for doing it. We're going to pop a link on our Facebook page, um, so if people want to find out more and maybe... I mean, uh, there's, there's two sites. There's the blog, which is justforjake.org.uk, yeah. and that'll be information about the cycle ride and everything else. And then, obviously, to make donations, it's just justgiving.com forward slash just hyphen for hyphen jake okay we can and sort we really appreciate you know you asking us to come on and talk about jake and his family and what we're doing it's you know a privilege like i said jason good luck with it i hope your knees get better soon as well all right mm -hmm. i know i've got 40 miles to do tonight <laughs> <laughs> well, no time for talking get on with it okay uh, thanks. jason thanks for coming on and um really good to see the pair of you as well kirsty and michael thank you for uh, telling the story thank uh, you we're here with Jay. and good luck with the rest of the fundraising how, how much more do you think you've you've got to raise well, well after that, that, that amount be about Jason's 10 000, raised so far and that's amazing. it you're so getting pretty close yeah. now aren't you we're really yeah, shocked by that we had no yeah. idea oh, we really? had that much already this is news, no is idea yeah. okay. thank you very much jason well um jason and the rest of the riders gearing up for their big push and like i said we'll pop a link on our facebook page really good to see the pair of you good luck thank, thank you thanks very much thank you, thank you. Thank you.